Yeah. Well, I've just, I've just found that uh, all the disciplines that I've tried inform every other discipline. No, uh, the fact of the matter is he's always distracted by shiny objects. <laughs> 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 I, don't, I don't find that to be true. <laughs> At all. Uh, so what, yeah. what form of insanity led you to, to, to try and do all of that? Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at Buckaroo Banzai as my role model. There's no reason why somebody can't be a rock star and a neurosurgeon and a particle physicist. Right? <laughs> I looked at it as, well, why can't I do all these things? And I found a list of zero. And so I just decided to try it and do it. And I've been, I've been a detective. Uh, I've been a firefighter. Uh, I've been a manhunter. I've been a rescue worker. Uh, I've been a bodyguard. Uh, and also, you know, race car driver, and actor, and screenwriter, and novelist, and illustrator, and designer. And I just got the beginnings of a deal with Safari Limited for a toy line for <coughs> culture. Oh, cool. And they're the ones that do the zoo toys and, and dinosaurs. Arr, 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 arr. First, you know, you're some inevitable betrayal. Yeah. And, uh, so will, you, will you be yeah. sculpting real animals? or? Oh, you... they hate that. The sound of the chainsaw frightens them. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried that with a muffler on the chainsaw? Hmm? Have you tried it with a muffler on the chainsaw? Well, it's never that cold. <laughs> oh, that kind of muffler. Yes. Uh, it's so, a big silencer. Mm. Silencer? No, I let her speak. <laughs> Kid men? Just, <laughs> it's the 21st century. She can talk if she wants to. I'm not going to silence her. Um, I'm not going to suppress her. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> They were a second behind on that one. Mm, that's all right. It takes a while for the echo to get there. Now, uh, what else would you like to know? Uh, would, uh, so for the, for the toy line, will you be creating um, mythical mythical animals? Yes. Okay. Yeah. In fact, they're, they're talking uh, series, and they use the word collaborate, which yeah. I like a lot, because that means more royalties. And um, <laughs> well, the great thing is, with the technology now, I can sculpt the figures large you know, using polymer clay and uh, an aluminum framing underneath. And then we 3D scan it, right? and then you can just reduce the scale that way, send it to Shapeways, and they can actually print out a master in steel to make the molds from. And that's kind of cool, because you, you, know, you have to worry about things like undercuts and seam lines all on these. But whenever you've got the figure this big instead of that big, you know, it makes it a lot easier. And, uh, and I'm listening to everybody's feedback on what they want. You know, so I'm going to incorporate that into the line. That's really good. Cool. Cool. And also, I'm on good terms right now with Mobius models and Pegasus models about designing uh, war gaming terrain for them and new model kits. And I'm still in role-playing games and working on RPGs. I love them so very much. <laughs> Missy and I go way back on role-playing games. I can beat anyone in this room, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with whips and chains. I was, I was playing this strange game called Greyhawk on the came from a five dollar mimeographed booklet from these guys that were these war gamers in Geneva, yeah. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin that no one had ever heard of. I played in the third Black War campaign. Yeah. Uh, I learned off of the uh, hand handwritten and mimeograph sheets that would become Dungeons and Dragons. And I've worked on over sixty role playing games since. Nice. And I love it. These are my people, uh, which leads me to the gamers. Um, about 15 years or so ago, there was a movie called The Gamers, and it was followed by Gamers Darkness Rising and Gamers Hands of Fate. And now uh, I'm a screenwriter and actor for The Gamers, the series. And we got back the original cast members to reprise their roles. <laughs> and for anyone that hasn't seen it, where uh, where can they find these? Grab it on YouTube. YouTube. Yep. You see, we do crowdfunded. So it's paid for. I mean, we don't have to worry about distribution or making any money back. So whenever we're done, we give it away. The world can have it. You know, cool is the rule. And you know, we sell DVDs and merch and everything, but as far as the content itself, the Kickstarter paid for it, and the fans get exactly what they want. And it is so fun and so funny. 
And uh, within the gamers, there is also a mythology about Nine Tails, which is a fictitious uh, supernatural espionage agency like Shield. I mean, and it's a comedy series, and so the the ongoing thing about Nine Tails is that none of the agents know how to be subtle. <laughs> so we we have this ongoing bit where everybody's idea of subtle is their you know their spy cars. We did a location shoot where they show up with a 39 Jaguar and a 1.8 million dollar uh, Lamborghini Murcielago R that was loaned to us, and one of seven in the world. Here, borrow this. You know, the production for the show is, is eleven you know, hundred ten thousand dollars. Here's a one point eight million dollar car to use. And, yeah. And a first time actor has it out of it. It's like, yeah, no pressure. Anyway. Um, and all these agents uh, have no idea how to be subtle. I roll up in a, a sixty six Cobra and uh, and Misty, you know, we consult with Misty who's the, the treasurer for Nine Tails. <laughs> and the great thing about it is part of the premise is that all of the Nine Tails agents are fantasy and science fiction writers and actors because manifestations from other dimensional threats happen where there are concentrations of creativity, so they tend to appear at conventions. <laughs> <laughs> so the agents of Nine Tails are convention guests and guests of honor because that's how we patrol. <laughs> and so we've got cameos in every episode from famous writers and actors and oh, that, are, that are calling in as agents to Nine Tails. So who so who we got? Uh, so far we got Mike Grell, uh, whose code name is Silverback. Uh, Robin Hobb, who picked uh, Troglodyte as her code <laughs> sign. No idea, because she's a gorgeous lady. Troglodyte, really? Um, we've got uh, a couple of really nice verbals now for the sorts of... Uh, Big names in the field. I won't say who yet, but we are we are finalized. Uh, we've got uh, Ramon Terrell, who's been on Supernatural and a couple other series. Um, he's also an excellent fantasy novelist, by the way, and a very accomplished actor. And uh, he wants to be on Z Nation, and about half of our crew is from Z Nation. Oh, really? Yeah. What a fun bunch of people. I hope you guys, <laughs> hope you guys watch Z Nation because it is a blast. And the character I play is Director Griffin, and. Um, and this is Kitsune, that's her code name. Of course. And it's a lot of fun. Subtle Dixon. Subtle Dixon, yeah. <laughs> and I'm standing there in, in a, a, you know, the suit and the, the custom hat next to the Shelby Cobra. What have I not been subtle? <laughs> I told you subtle. What do you not understand about subtle? I do not draw attention to my suit. <laughs> 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 you need your hat. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've got, you know, a nice custom hat for this thing, and uh, we've had some, some beautiful, uh, you know, costume design and all for this. Um, it's just a blast because we're using it to, to plug people's merchandise too. Mm. You know, you can actually get that hat from the milliner and stuff like oh, wow. that. It's, that's, that's pretty fun. So between all of the projects mm -hmm. and the thousand and one books that uh, Mercedes does every sure. year, uh, what is a typical work day around uh, around your house? From, Aggravated. From from the moment you get up to uh, the moment you go to bed, what is what does a typical work day look like? Well, first of all, our day generally begins around four in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> now, although we have parrots, we have them in a completely windowless room protected inside our our concrete dome house. Yes. So that uh, they're about as safe from tornadoes as you can be without having a dedicated tornado safer. They are very um, happy for us. And they have four banks of uh, dot, dot, dot. full spectrum lighting. <coughs> so it's for, I, when, the, I, when the electrician came in, I said, I want to have to be able to wear sunglasses in here. Yeah, <laughs> they're very happy. It's all insulated, uh, soundproof, so we can live with having a house full of parrots because of the soundproofing. <laughs> so get up at four, feed the cats, because the cats will be under your feet until you feed the cats. They're pretty much the alarm. <laughs> wet food, wet food. <laughs> yeah. uh, start the bird food, get dressed, check my email. Feed the birds. Uh, deal with email and uh, the, the forums that I'm on. Uh, and then start into work. And then we break around midnight and we watch a little TV. Cuddle parrots. Have some dinner. Yeah, cuddle parrots. Parrots are out 
all the time mm -hmm. because parents have got to have social one on one social interaction. Right. So I've got a parent on the back of my chair while I'm working all the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Although back when we were doing a lot of rehab, I had this one time in the studio where I was I was drawing some Taladris art, some Hawk Brothers art, and I had a red tail hawk on the chair behind me who was preening my hair while I'm drawing on <laughs> And I had to stop and go, this is exactly how the fans are picturing me. <laughs> the reality is, of, of, of working with parrots, however, is... <laughs> yeah, type, 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 move away, type, 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 move away. Hey, what's this key do, bike, pull? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the, the one that's getting overly amorous and oh. deciding that he's going to feed me. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm happy to say that we, we locked the edits yesterday, and now it's working on uh, post-production color matching and effects. Uh, so it's just chugging along in production. We're surprisingly fast because our executive producer just got back from filming an episode of Mongolia. Uh, 